In this video, we will verify whether the given system is invertible or not. Following represents the input output relation of various systems. Determine whether they are invertible or not. These are the three systems or input output relations are given. We are supposed to verify whether these are invertible or not. If invertible represents the inverse system. Before proceeding with example, let me explain what is meant by invertible system. A system is said to be invertible if input to the system is recovered from the system output or if system gives distinct output for distinct inputs then we can say that this kind of systems are known as invertible system. Now let me take the first example that is we have y of n is equal to n x of n y of n is equal to n x of n. Now we will consider the second definition that is if system gives distinct output for distinct inputs. Now let here x of n is input y of n is output. Let the input x of n be delta n. So in that case I can represent this y of n as that is y of n is equal to n delta n. So we know that delta n is equal to 1 that is delta n is equal to 1 for n is equal to 0 and is equal to 0 when n is not equal to 0. So with respect to this definition the value of delta n will be 1 when n is equal to 0. So when n is 0 this term will be 0 when 0 is multiplied with the function we will get y of n is equal to 0. So we get y of n is equal to 0 when we considered x of n is equal to delta n. Now let me take the another value of x of n. Now let x of n is equal to phi delta n. So in this case we will see what we get for y of n. So I can write y of n is equal to n into phi delta n. So in this case also delta n is defined only for n equal to 0. So here also we will get y of n is equal to 0 because n is 0. So entire term will be 0. Here we can observe that when x of n is equal to delta n we got y of n is equal to 0. When x of n is equal to phi delta n we will get y of n is equal to 0. So here for two different inputs we got same output. But according to definition it should be if system gives distinct output for distinct inputs. So here for different inputs we should get different output. But in this case we got the same output that is y of n is equal to 0. Therefore we can say that this system is not invertible. Therefore given system is not invertible since here distinct input gives same output. Now let me verify the second uh, system that is y of t is equal to x 2t plus 3. y of t is equal to x of 2t plus 3. So here, here let me consider a system having system operator say h. Suppose input to the system is say x of t then it produces output y of t which is equal to x of 2t plus 3. Suppose if I pass this signal through another system I will call this as inverse system. Say output of the inverse system is say z of t. This must be equal to x of t. Then we can say that this system is invertible. Now let me explain this with, with very simple example so that we can understand better. Assume that this is 
my input signal x of t which is a triangular signal varies from minus 1 to plus 1. Now assume that the x of t signal is applied to the first system having system operator h. Now I will try to get the y of t. The y of t to get y of t first we have to perform the shifting operation that is first we have to perform x of t plus 3. Now let me draw the x of t plus 3 that is to get x of t plus 3 say this is x of t plus 3 we have to shift this x of t signal towards left by 3 unit say this is 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and this is minus 4 so this 0 will exist here my x of t plus 3 signal looks like this now if I apply the scaling operation on this signal that is say x of 2t plus 3 which is nothing but y of t when this value is 2 now we will get this signal as so each time period is divided by 2 so the same signal will appear between so 4 divided by 2 is 2 and minus 2 divided by 1 is minus 1 the so signal will appear like this. So this is y of t signal. Now assume that the same y of t signal is applied to inverse system. First, I suppose to perform y of t minus 2. If I perform y of t minus 2, let me draw the signal. So y of t minus 3 by 2 is obtained by shifting this y of t signal towards right by 1.5 unit so this is 0 and shifting minus 1 towards right by 1.5 means it will be 0.5 so this is 0.5 and shifting this towards right by 1.5 means this will appear at minus 0 0.5 so the signal will be looks like this this is y of t minus 3 by 2 now so now I will apply the scaling operation of y of 1 by 2 t minus 3 by 2 that is same signal will be scaled by 0 0.5 so when this value is 0 0.5 this signal will be expanded by half unit that is I will get the signal like this that is this will be at minus 1 and this will be at plus 1 this is 0 and this is my y of 1 by 2 t minus 3 by 2 which is equal to z of t that is this signal which is nothing but x of t. So now here we can observe that this signal is invertible with inverse system as y of 1 by 2 t minus 3 by 2. Now let me conclude this that is given system is given system is invertible. So inverse system is represented as inverse system is given by z of t is equal to we have y of 1 by 2 t minus 3 by 2. This is the inverse system. Now let me consider the third example that is y of n is equal to summation k varies from minus infinity to n x of n let me call it as equation 1 now i will try to expand this summation suppose the value of summation k is equal to say 0 to 3 x of n in that case this n can take different values of k so for k equal to 0 i can represent it as x of 0 plus x of 1 plus x of 2 plus x of 3. So here we can observe that here the maximum value of n is 3. So here it is n, here it is 3. Now I will try to represent this equation as by comparing with this I can write it as y of n is equal to so I will come from higher value to lower value the highest value will be for k equal to n. For k equal to n we will get x of n here that is nothing but x of 3 here. 
the next sample will be x of 2 x of 2 is nothing but 1 less than this so in this case i can represent it as x of n minus 1 here we can see that it, this one is x of 1 is 1 less than this 2 so i can represent it as x of n minus 2 and it will be continued till infinity similarly i can represent y of n plus 1 as x of n plus 1 plus 1 sample less than this that is x of n plus 1 sample less than this that is x of n minus 1 plus x of n minus 2 plus and so on similarly if i represent y of n minus 1 i can represent it as x of n minus 1 plus 1 less than this it will be x of n minus 2 plus x of n minus 3 and so on now by observing these outputs now i will rewrite this equation number 1 as that is i can write y of n is equal to x of n here we can see that y of n is equal to x of n the first term is x of n the same thing i have written plus second should be x of n minus 1 plus x of n minus 2 that is nothing but i can take it as y of n minus 1 y of n minus 1 so now from this equation from above equation i can get back the value x of n which is equal to y of n minus y of n minus 1 so therefore this will be the value of the inverse system that is now let me explain this is the system having system operator say h the input to the system is x of n the output of the system is y of n so when it is passed through another inverse system say the output of the system is z of n so in that case this z of n is nothing but y of n minus y of n minus 1 therefore here the system is invertible invertible and inverse system is inverse system is z of n is equal to y of n minus y of n minus 1 which is nothing but x of n this is how we can verify the invertibility of the given systems thank you for watching